side in this video I'm going to show you how you can take any YouTube channel and you can get I think up to 15 of their most recent uploads we can get the title we can get the thumbnail we can get the link directly to that video you can also get other information such as the view count the like count etc now the method I'm going to be using here will require tasker and auto tools as well but before we dive into the tutorial, let me show you the workflow of adding a channel. So right now you see my most five recent uploads from my YouTube channel, and you can see those right here as well. And there's that fifth one right here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to another YouTube channel, and what we want to do is we want to copy this channel ID. So I'm going to copy that, and this is where Tasker is going to come into play. So I do have a project set up, it's called YouTube, and you can find this in my Tasker files. That link is in the description. And for this project, we have a single task, but what I wanna focus on right now to show you my workflow is the VARs. I have this global variable and it's called percent channel. Now this channel ID was my YouTube channel ID, but I'm gonna come in here and delete this and replace it with that other one. So now we have a new channel ID and that's from Insidium. And this is a plugin maker for Cinema 4D. They have an outstanding plugin called X Particles and I've been following them for a while. But anyway, let's go ahead and check on that. We have a new variable and I'm going to apply this in Tasker by checking there. Heading back to the home screen, I'm going to press this refresh button up here. And what you can notice down here, we have a little flash saying that uploads have been updated and you see a different list of videos, and that's actually the five most recent videos from Insidium. And I did mention we can get the links to those videos. So for example, if I want to come to this one right here, I tap on that thumbnail, and as you can see, we get the link to that video straight to it. Now from time to time, I do find that I may have to hit this refresh button more than once, maybe twice, or maybe it just takes a while for it to load up these new thumbnail images. But it works very well. So now let me show you how I do it. So I'm inside of that project in Tasker and I have this XML uploads task and here's what we're gonna do. Now to get the feed for any YouTube channel, you want to use this URL right here. And then after channel ID equals, you want to copy and paste that channel ID and this is my channel ID. It'll load up an XML, but the issue I ran into with using custom to parse this XML is that I couldn't get some of these tags down here. Um, this media thumbnail URL, this attribute, I couldn't get it to work, so that's why I resorted to Tasker and Auto Tools. And what we're going to let Tasker and Auto Tools do, we're going to let it take this XML and essentially convert it into a JSON. And with that JSON, we can access these URLs, most importantly here for this thumbnail here, but notice we do have other stats. We have the number of likes, the number of views, etc. And what I want to show you is how to take this URL with the channel ID. This is what we want to do a HTTP request on in Tasker. So for that first action, you can just click on this plus down here, type in HTTP, and notice we have a HTTP request. Now in some of my older videos, I did use HTTP get, but that is getting deprecated, so we want to use this request option here. So for that request, the only thing we have to do is copy and paste that URL right here. Now the only thing I've changed in that URL is percent channel, and that is one of those variables. Again, let me show you where that variable is. If we exit out of this task and go over to the vars, we can actually just type in the channel ID here, instead of having to come into this task every single time and manually changing this URL here. Totally optional to do that, but I thought that would speed up the workflow a little bit. And then something else out of this. So essentially what's going to happen is, is it's going to grab this XML and it's going to store it as a local variable percent HTTP underscore data. So when I back out of here to test things, I have this action cut off, but I had it flash that HTTP underscore data, and essentially it was flashing this back to me. Now this is an XML. This is where Auto Tools comes in, and if you want to add that one real quick, assuming you do have Auto Tools, I highly recommend it. Typing in JSON, we want to do the Auto Tools JSON read. And in this action, here's the things that we want to set up here. I'm gonna to go to the configuration, 
And for the input format, make sure you check XML because this variable that we're getting ready to look at, that HTTP underscore data, is an XML file. Leave simple mode checked, and then this string or HTTP URL you want to get the value of, we don't need any help selecting a file here. I'm using that local variable that we did the HTTP request on. So it's going to look at this XML here, and it's going to essentially convert it to a JSON. Let's press OK on that. And then one more thing we have to do here is the JSON root variable. Basically, we're going to take all of this junk and we will get the whole JSON object and we'll put it somewhere. So here's what that looks like. JSON root variable. And you can use any variable you want. I did percent YouTube uploads JSON. And this variable is going to be the converted file, so to speak, taking it from an XML to a JSON. Pressing OK on that. And that's the only things we need to change inside of here. So checking on that. So take note here, we're going to look at that HTTP underscore data, which is the XML. And the point of auto tools here is to essentially convert that XML to this variable here, which is going to be our JSON. And notice that variable is the whole JSON object. So backing out of here. And again, for testing purposes, I have this cut off, but I did flash that new local variable that I have here just to verify that it was a JSON object. And then what I've actually done is I have saved that file to my device. So this action here, write file, we pick our location, and I'm just using my internal storage, the Tasker folder. That is a default folder in Tasker. I've created a subfolder in there called Tasker HTTP request and I'm saving it as whatever file I want, but I am doing .json. So I call this YouTube uploads .json. Well, what do we want to store in this file? That variable that we just created using AutoTool. So this is actually going to save the JSON to our device, and we're going to read that file inside of custom. So let's back out of here. And then the last thing I have going on is a flash, just saying, hey, uploads have been updated. Just a way for me to see that, yes, when I press that refresh button in custom, it is actually running through this task. And when this flashes, I know it's done. Now, you may have to give it several seconds to upload those new thumbnails and whatnot, but this does work pretty good. And something else to mention here, go ahead and add some type of icon to this task because custom does want to see an icon or some label for that task. No big deal there. Pick whatever you want. And that's it for the tasker side. And again, go to my tasker files, look for this YouTube project, and it's going to have this task inside of it. So now the next thing I want to show you is that, yes, this file is saved on my device. And using SD made, I can actually tap on that file and I can copy the path right there. And that's going to allow me to easily paste that into custom. And speaking of custom, this is the component that I have made. It is called YouTube Upload. You can find this in my free components folder. And inside of this component, we just have a couple of stack groups. This stack group here is a vertically centered stack group, and then we have two more stack groups in there, where simply one of them is the refresh button. Let me go ahead and show that to you real quick. It's just an icon font, but when I touch that icon font, I want to launch shortcut, and that particular shortcut is that task shortcut that I just showed you inside of Tasker. And I don't know if this one's really necessary since Tasker's doing all the dirty work, but I'm leaving it here anyway, a custom action to force the updates of RSS, text, and XML. So that's it for the refresh button. Now let's go to this other stack group where we have uploads. And as a matter of fact, I mean, you can do, I think, up to 15 in here. I'm just going to come in here and delete all of them except for one of them, this first one we have right here. And I'm calling this individual uploads. Now when I copy and paste this, it gives me a new one. And you may say, oh, it looks the same, but actually this is XP Fluid Flip and XP Flow Field, two completely different topics for X particles. But look at the thumbnails. They are different as well. Now, what's making this change dynamically, so to speak, is the fact that I'm using the SI module index. But let me jump into this first one here. Let's go to the text, which is the title of that video. And if we jump to that text, check out what we're doing. We're doing a web git and in quotes, we are putting that file path to that JSON that we created in Tasker. 
And speaking of that file that's saved on my device, I went ahead and transferred that to my computer as well. So I'm going to select all on this, copy it, heading over to a JSON formatter, any of those, there's several of them online. I'm going to paste that and I'm going to process this. And here is that XML file now formatted into a JSON. So this file that you see here is that same file that's saved on my device. So we're accessing that file, comma, JSON, comma, and now we're going to start to parse or navigate through this thing to find the title. So I have dot feed, dot entry, and then I have this plus SI module index, comma, one with a plus after it, and all of that stuff is inside of square brackets. This is what's allowed me to copy and paste and create those new entries or those new uploads from that particular YouTube channel. So let's look at it, dot feed, dot entry. So we have dot feed, then we have our entry, and this can be entry zero, entry one, entry two, entry three, depending on the module index of the stack groups that we copy and paste to create each individual title and video thumbnail. So for example, this is entry zero here that I'm unchecking and checking or showing and hiding. So entry zero right now, and then we want to go to the title, so dot title. And if we look for that, we have the title right there. So this is entry zero. If we look at entry one, the title is going to be the flow field sneak peek, whereas right now we see the fluid flip. Because again, the fluid flip was right here in entry zero. But if we go to entry one, and let me show you that here. If I go back to those stat groups that I copy and paste, here's the first entry, its index is zero, Here's the second entry, its index is one. If we go to that title, notice we have the exact same code, but we are getting that title for the second entry, the XP flow field sneak peek, and that's exactly what we see here. So that's how we get the title from reading that JSON file. Checking on that, and I'm just going to stay in this second entry, but now let's talk about the image, and this is why I'm doing everything that I'm doing. Again, to remind you, if you missed that, I couldn't figure out how to access this media thumbnail URL from the XML file. This is an attribute that sits inside of this media thumbnail tag and I couldn't get it to work. If you know how to do that using just KOWP, you can save us a lot of work. Please share a comment below. But nonetheless, if we go to this image, looking at this code, heading back to the JSON, we're looking at the same file, comma JSON, comma, and some of the same stuff, dot feed, dot entry, the SI module index. But now look at where we're going. We're going to the media group, dot media thumbnail, dot URL. So I was in this second entry, and we're going to the media group, there's our media group, dot media thumbnail, there's our media thumbnail, dot URL. And that's how we're getting this URL for this thumbnail, and that matches perfectly. One more thing to show you here before I let you go. If we tap on this image, so I have this image highlighted here. If we touch it, we're going to get the link to the video and we're gonna open that link up and the code here, very similar, but notice we're just changing our path to get to the link to the video. And this is very similar to the other codes that I've showed you, except now after that SI module index junk, we're doing dot link dot href. And if we look, Here's our link, here's our href, and there is the link directly to that video. As you can see, that matches. So what this will do now is if we tap on this image, it will load up that video in YouTube and you can start watching it immediately. And there you have it, somewhat of a complex workflow, but if you think about it, ultimately what we're doing is we're taking an XML, we're converting it to a JSON, and the big reason why I'm doing that is so that I can access that thumbnail that I was unable to do so in the XML file. Again, if you are able to figure that out, please share a comment below. I would really appreciate that. And if you like what you see and you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.